A warm welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday the 11th of January. Now, last week there was published some really concerning research from China. What the researchers did was they got a virus from a pangolin. That's these charming little creatures that are so abused throughout uh, Eastern Asia particularly. They took a virus from the pangolin and they cultured it in cells in the laboratory. And they then infected mice with it and it killed all of the mice that had infected through brain infection. So they've generated this new virus that kills 100% of mice it's infected with, but it gets worse because the mice that were infected were humanized mice. Now, these are called transgenic mice. In other words, they were given some human genes and they were given human ACE receptor genes that were expressed by the mouse. So these are essentially human ACE receptors in genes. And it was a coronavirus from the pangolin and it killed 100% of the mice that were infected. And these are the things that they are jiggling around with in laboratories. This is absolute madness and it needs to be banned uh, yesterday as far as I'm concerned. The only reason I can see for doing this kind of research, the only reason I can see is as biological weapons. I really can't see anything else. So that sounds melodramatic. The researchers say it's because they're worried about spillover infection. But of course, they created the virus in the first place, in their cell lines, in the laboratory. Um, so it's not a virus that's in nature to spill over into human populations. So we've got a situation where they created a virus or generated a virus. It's not that they synthesized it together. It just evolved in their cell cultures in the lab. That killed 100% of the humanized mice, brain virus, brain virus disease. Now, um, they don't say whether they've tested it on humans or not, but given that it was affecting human ACE2 receptors, I think the probability is it would cause viral brain death in the vast majority of human beings that it infected. This research, to me, is just an existential threat to humanity. It really has to be stopped. Because the record of labs leaking all over the place, you were just reminded of a sieve. Anyway, let's let's give you the details and you can um, make, make your own mind up. I'm not going to... I've told you what I think. But uh, this is the paper here. It's a preprint. Uh, lethal infection of human uh, ACE2 receptors in transgenic mice. So let's look at it in some detail now. So lethal infection. So it kills 100% of the mice that infects. But remember, these are humanized mice with human genes expressing human type ACE2 receptors, which, of course, is the receptor that the coronavirus binds into. But this is a different coronavirus, of course. Infecting a human ACE, uh, of human ACE2 receptor, transgenic mice, mice bred up with humans, which we can we can... <laughs> We can seriously question the ethics of this as well. What are the ethics of putting human genes into mice? I think that's an open question. Let, let me know what you think. I'm pretty uncomfortable. I can see why they do it. They're still mice, but they're expressing human proteins, human receptor sites. Let me know if you how you feel about that. I feel somewhat uncomfortable about that, I must say. Um, so... Caused by a SARS uh, coronavirus 2 related. So it's not the SARS coronavirus 2, it's related. It's from these pangolins, these anteating type creatures that are so abused in Asian, Asia for their blood. Um, coronavirus, and this is the name of the virus, GX, underline P2V. Uh, not a very trendy name, but there you go. Published on the 4th of January. There's the links, check it out for yourself. SARS coronavirus 2 related pangolin coronavirus GX, we'll just call it GX from now on, shall we? Um, can cause 100% mortality in human ACE2 transgenic mice. 100% um, is one more than 99. It meant it killed them all. A virus that went into the brain and caused death through viral brain disease. I'm very uncomfortable with this. Very, very uncomfortable with this. Potentially attributed to late stage brain infection. So it's brain infection. This is direct from the authors, of course. Brain infection is the problem. This underscores a spillover risk. Well, a spillover would be a natural spillover. So a spillover would be that the virus comes from the animal, spills over into humans and causes an infection. And, th and that's what these, these, uh, these scientists are worried about, according to what they've written in the paper. But they created the virus in the lab in the first place. Um, you might see a paradox there. 
so the, anyway, they're, they're worried about the risk of a spillover. Fair enough. Uh, and, and it provides a unique model for the understanding of the pathogenic mechanisms of sars cov virus 2. In other words, it gives them a chance to study it. Why they would want to study this is slightly less clear. Right, the letter to the editor. Dear editor, two sars coronavirus 2 related pangolin coronavirus. So they found this one, but this one didn't do any harm. This one was fairly safe in the mice, but this one wasn't. We're identified prior to the COVID-19 outbreak. Now, as you can see from this, this was discovered in 2017. So this is a while back. And the paper was published on the 4th of January, 2024. The relative isolates were cultured in 2020 and 2017. So they were culturing this in, back in 2017. Um, now, early, pass uh, early passage through the cells um, isolated was actually a cell culture adapted mutant. So in other words, in other words, what happened was that this mutant that caused 100% lethal brain disease developed evolved if you like while they were passing it through various cell cultures to grow it in the lab and then they thought oh hey presto we've got this 100 percent lethal virus so that's how it came about um the paper doesn't say they deliberately constructed it they they probably didn't deliberately construct it because it says in the paper that um it was just uh through passage through cell culture but then they found this incredible virus that they wanted to study and they want to study further, which is even more concerning. Anyway, um, we assessed its pathogenicity of the humanized and the human ACE receptor to mice. So mice with human ACE receptors in them. We found that this GX cologne uh, can infect the mice. So it can infect the humanized mice. Therefore, it is immensely probable that it would infect humans very readily. Uh, as far as I can, as far as I can tell, um, dealing with a dangerous virus, high viral loads detected in both the lungs and the brain tissue. Now, the fact that high viral loads were detected in the lungs means that the virus would have been breathed out by the mice. It was also detected in the nose. So we're dealing with a virus here that kills the brain, kills the the, the organism through through brain damage, but grows in the mouth and the uh, the lungs therefore can spread so we're dealing with a transmissible respiratory transmissible presumably droplet and aerosol transmissible virus that can kill the brain this is what they're playing around with uh, the infection resulted in 100 percent mortality in these uh, humanized mice 100 percent humanized mice we surmise that the cause of death may be linked to the occurrence of late brain infection. So it's caused by brain infection, they believe. Or the mice that were infected with the live virus succumb to infection within seven to eight days post-inoculation. It, it is quite possible. I, I, I'm not interested in scaremongering. It's just, it is possible that a virus that is readily spread, like sars coronavirus 2 could have a massively higher case fatality rate, infection fatality rate. That is quite possible. And uh, quite frightening. It is certainly possible, especially of these viruses being selected specifically for that purpose. So if you were a military planner, you might think, oh, this is an interesting virus. It's spread through the air. We could just drop it off in country X from country B and, or wherever it was. And uh, no, it would just kill everyone for us. Then we can just move in. All the buildings will be nice and empty. Um, you know, it's, it's really quite... It's really quite terrifying that the potential here. Um, all the mice that were infected died within seven to eight days, rendering 100% mortality. Now, five days post-infection, they got a decrease in body weight, so they're starting to sicken after five days. Relatively long incubation period for these viruses. Seven days post-infection, the hair started standing on end, pilo erection, hunch posture. That indicates to me something wrong with the nervous system. You've got this hunch posture. It's, it's a nervous system thing, I think. Sluggish movements also indicates nervous system involvement. Uh, eyes turn white. They don't, <coughs> excuse me, they, don't, they don't say why the eyes turn white. Uh, it doesn't sound very good. That's all we know. That's all it says in the paper. They infected uh, eight mice, eight with humanized uh, ACE2 receptors. Eight mice inoculated with inactivated virus, eight mice mock infected. So it was a good, reasonably conducted study. Small numbers, of course, but still 100% of these ones died. Every single one of them. 
Right, some, so they dissected some mice after three days and after six days. They did a quantitative analysis of the viral RNA and the amount of the T. To, 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 the, the, that's basically the quantitative amount of the virus in the tissues. Significant amount of RNA viruses in, in the brain, of course, because it kills the brain, the lungs, so they could breathe it out, turbinate in the nose, eyes, so it could be in the tears, and trachea, so it could be breathed out as well. This just screams out to me uh, respiratory uh, infective virus that's why this is particularly frightening it could so easily get out of the lab because we know it's happened before um no or low amounts of viral rna so it didn't seem to affect the heart so much the liver the spleen the kidneys the tongue the stomach and the intestines didn't seem to be uh, particularly infected now the lung samples high viral rna load after three to six days so on days three and day six so that means that these people would be, or these mice would be infected for at least three days. So um, bad symptoms developed on day five, but day three and day four, they could be feeling reasonably okay and, and infect uh, others. Um, sort of pre-symptomatic, uh, pre-symptomatic spread. Day five, they'd start feeling ill, but they'd still be infectious on day six. It's, can, you, can you see this kind of a bad combination that this virus has happened to crop up? Viral antigens also detected. In other words, they're able to detect the virus itself and the viral RNA. And these two were consistent. So uh, there was the viral RNA and the virus proteins themselves. I think it was the nucleocapsid protein they tested for. So pretty certain that the virus is in these tissues. Uh, viral load in the lungs decreased significantly after day six. So it looks like they're infected from day three to day six. Lungs showed minimal information. So they weren't dying of lung disease. The lungs were showing minimal information, but the virus was present in large amounts in the lungs, so they could breathe it out. But the virus was present in higher amounts in the brain, and it was the brain that it was damaging, killing the mice, and presumably would do the same if it infected a human, given that it was a humanized ACE receptor that it was in the mouse. And of course, we have human. Obviously, we have human ACE receptors because we're humans. Right, brain sample. Um, day three post-infection viral RNA was detected in all infected mice in the brain. This is going to the brain, unlike SARS coronavirus 2. This is a brain disease. Shrunken neurons visible in the cerebral cortex on microscopy. That's the outside part of the brain, of course. The cortex is the outside of an organ. Um, viral antigens also detected. So again, detecting the RNA, detecting the nucleocapsid protein as well. So the virus definitely in the brain. Day 6 post-infection, exceptionally high levels of RNA. So this, this is very large amounts, actually. It's log scale. Uh, huge amounts of RNA virus in the brain um, in all infected mice focal lymphocyte inflammation around the blood vessels lymphocytes of course are the classic cell that combats viral infection so again highly uh, well proves basically the viral infection in the brain because of this uh, lymphocyte infiltration severe brain infection during later stages of infection may be the key cause of death in the mice they say to the best of our knowledge this is the first report showing SARS coronavirus 2 related pangolin coronavirus causes 100% mortality in humanized mice well it could have been done somewhere else uh, if it has so far it hasn't leaked let's hope they can keep it contained and uh, preferably eliminate this risk now um the authors go on to say, uh, suggesting a risk of uh, this GP virus from the pangolins spill over into humans. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because this virus was created in your lab. How can a virus that's not in the natural environment, but is in a lab, spill over from the natural environment to the human population when it's not in the natural environment? I don't see how spillover infection is possible. I see that a lab leak is possible. don't see that spillover infection is impossible. So I'm sorry, I'm not buying that one. I'm not buying this philanthropic, oh, we're doing this for the potential future good of humanity. Don't buy it. Might be true, but I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. Propensity for coronavirus to undergo adaptive mutation during passage, uh, passage culture. So what they do, they, they infect various cells here because, of course, viruses can only grow in the in cells so what they're saying is that these coronaviruses have the innate potential to mutate and evolve in this case into something deadly 100 percent deadly when they're faffing around with it in the lab growing it in cell cultures 
So there is a predisposition of coronaviruses of this type to become, to mutate during their, their culturing in the lab to grow them up so they can analyse them. Now, of course, most mutations will just turn it into something irrelevant and the mutation will simply die out. But of course, if it's a mutation that has an adaptive advantage, that will infect more cells in their cell culture and that will become the predominant um, virus strain, just as it did, ju ju just as Omicron overtook from uh, Delta. In, in human populations, the same will happen in cell cultures. Now, all sorts of things, they say, require further investigation. They listed a few things that require further investigation. Um, no, I don't think so. I think this should be shut down immediately as a potential ex existential threat to humanity. I don't think you should be investigating this further because you're investigating a virus which doesn't exist in the natural environment. Therefore, I say, as far as I can see, is no threat. We don't want further investigations in your leaky labs. Thank you very much. This should be stopped. This is a danger. It's possible that this GX has undergone virulence enhancing mutation. So it's probably gone virulence enhancing mutation uh, in the lab. Um, if it's got virulence enhancing mutation, that means the amount of function it's capable of has increased. In fact, we could say, we could use a phrase actually, we could say there's been gain of function, couldn't we? Justin Kinney, Simon Centre for Quantitative Biology, Cold Springs Harbour Laboratories, United States, published in the Epoch Times. The research is still very dangerous, though. I'm especially concerned that the, uh, that the paper does not say what biological level the work was performed at. So was this done in a very high containment laboratory or was it done in some dodgy level two laboratory? Coronavirus research in China is often done at a biosafety level two that is in inadequate, inadequate, not adequate for working with potential pandemic pathogens that might be transmitted by air. And given that there was high amounts of this virus in the lungs and high amounts in the trachea and high amounts in the nose, yeah, it would be respiratory transmitted. He goes on. Um, indeed, coronavirus research done at BSL2 may have caused the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed. And by showing that the coronavirus has surprisingly high pathogenicity, well, yeah, it kills 100%. That's pretty, that's pretty high. It doesn't get any higher than that, actually. 100% death is the highest pathogenicity, pathogenicity you can get. The work underscores the need for extreme caution, I'll say, when working with novel coronaviruses. In fact, you shouldn't be working with them. Now, these are the authors of the paper. Here, now it's a bit small, so you can't see it. Uh, the new song is the corresponding author. Uh, did not respond to a request for comment on how the scientists uh, scientists ensured the experiments were performed safely. From the Epoch Times. Now this other scientist, Yung Gang Tong, who's also there. <coughs> I don't know if you can see this, but you have to take my word for it. It is there. Check it. Check it. No, don't take my word for it. Check on the original paper. Don't take my word for anything. Yung Gang Tong. Um, according to the Epoch Times, trained in a Chinese military program and worked in military-run labs. Oh, that's just amazing, isn't it? Military-run labs, right? Okay. Okay. Maybe where they make bioweapons, I don't know. He also co-authored a paper in 2023 with uh, uh, Zhenglai Shai, who helps run the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Wuhan Institute of Virology. I've heard that name somewhere before. Um, Justin Goodman, Senior Vice President, White Coat Waste Project, USA Nonprofit Agency, again reported in the Epoch Time, Times. Dangerous and deadly tests on mice. Yep. Um, this is why shipping US tax dollars to foreign adversaries, unaccountable animal lab, uh, is a recipe for disaster. And we're working with lawmakers to stop it. And let's hope that happens soon. I do hope this isn't being funded by... Uh, finances from uh, by finances from um, finances from overseas let's leave it at that have we learned nothing I conclude from this yeah that's exactly what we have learned nothing 
what can we do about this as individuals? Well, if enough people complain, I guess maybe something will be done. Maybe there'll be a government inquiry or something. You know, it really is incredible that we have people in positions of power that can play fast and loose with your lives, your parents' lives and your children's lives. But that's the situation we're in. And uh, hopefully now that we've studied this, you and me are in better contact with reality than we were before, which is always good. We want to live in the real world, not in a matrix. We'll, we'll leave it there. It's just a very, very uncomfortable video. Um, I mean, I've, I've been working on this all day and I've just become more and more uncomfortable. <laughs> I thought they've done what? Come on. What about the, you know, just the, well, you, 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 yeah. I've become more and more uncomfortable as the day has gone on. And uh, now I'm thinking about it again. I feel pretty uncomfortable about it. I'm sorry if I've made you feel uncomfortable, but at least we're now more in contact with reality. This is what human beings are doing to this wonderful created order we've been entrusted with. Messing it up. Thank you for watching.